Good morning, Wesley Church. My name is Jessica Ulrich, and I have some great news to share with you this morning. As long as things don't change from now until then, our plan to return to in-person, in our sanctuary worship begins next Sunday, November 8th at 9.30 in the morning. Of course, it's going to look a little different, as most things do look a little different right now. We'll have one service, we'll have registration, the time has changed, and of course, we are wearing masks and keeping distance, and all of those things are spelled out in a letter that Pastor Tom has written to each of us. And you can find that letter on the website, our website, and in your November newsletter. And before you would return to worship, please, please, please read that over. Get familiar with that so that we are all on the same page together for the well-being of our whole congregation. But here's our situation. And here's an invitation for you this morning. We have so many faithful volunteers that help lead worship every single Sunday so that we are able to have a worship service. And in order to be a healthy, thriving church community, we all play a part. We all share our gifts. But in the middle of a pandemic, our pool of volunteers has decreased and our needs have changed and have increased. And in order to have an in-person service, we need volunteers, honestly, and we need people to share their gifts. So if you plan to regather with us, we're asking you if you would consider playing a part in leading worship. We're not asking you to serve in these roles every single week from like now until eternity or anything, but maybe once, maybe twice a month, depending on the response that we get. On the screen here, you'll see different areas where you can serve, including the duties that of course could change, but are pretty set. And we're asking if you could take a moment, read these over, maybe pause or, or read these quickly while I speak, but would you be willing to serve on one of these teams? If so, please email us or call the office, charlestonwesleyumc at gmail.com, and we want to get you plugged in. And again, we do all of this because we love God and we do want to worship God in person together in our sanctuary. We are a family and we all play a part. And I hope that you are able to take that time to pray about it, to discern what is best for you and pray about whether or not you'll accept this invitation today. We can't wait to hear from you. Hello, I am Brock Warren, the youth director here at Wesley United Methodist Church, and I would like to let our community know about the remaining announcements for the rest of this week. Um, on November 7th, we will be having our Helping Hands Day. That is a day when we reach out to our congregants that need a little bit of extra help, and we will be doing that on November 7th, like I said before. But if you are willing to volunteer, we are still looking for more volunteers. So please let Pastor Janice know if you are able to help out with Helping Hands Day on November 7th. We are working very hard to make sure we can help the people that need help, but do so in a safe manner. So please reach out to Janice and let her know if you can volunteer to help out. If you would like a comfort and joy yard sign, we invite you to um, reach out to Rosalie. We are taking orders for those and we will distribute those, or you can pick them up at the church if you would like. So if you would like to help us spread the message of comfort and joy this Advent and Christmas season, please let Rosalie in the church office know that you would like a yard sign to help the Wesley United Methodist Church with that ministry. And as this is the first Sunday of the month, we are going to celebrate Holy Communion together later on in our worship service. So we invite you to gather your elements right now so if you uh, would like to pause the video we invite you to do so to gather up some juice and bread if you have it on hand if not any substitute that you think is worthy is just fine so please gather your elements for communion now and we invite you to share in communion with us 
later on in the worship service. It is so glad. I am so glad. <laughs> excuse me. I am so glad that you're worshiping with us today. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Please join with me in the call to worship. Grace to you and peace from God, who is and was and is to come. Amen. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of rulers on earth. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen.
Join with me now in the prayer of the day. We give you all thanks and praise, O God, for you bring all who trust in you out of the great ordeal into the glorious reward of heaven and number them among the multitude of your saints. You created the earth as an inheritance and destined all life for a glory that is yet to be revealed. Through the law and your prophets and apostles, you called a people from every nation, tribe, and language. In your child, Jesus, you revealed your desire to bless the poor in spirit and pure of heart, to wipe away the tears of those who mourn, and to satisfy all hunger for righteousness and peace. Though he was persecuted and killed, you raised him to life and with him you are saving all who keep faith so that they may be like him when his final glory is revealed. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you thanks and praise at all times through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
historic lesson for today comes from the Revelation to John, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Happy Halloween! Or rather, today, Happy All Saints Day! I wonder what you might have dressed up for yesterday for Halloween. How did you celebrate? What is Halloween? Hmm. Well, Halloween was once called All Hallows Eve. Eve, the night before, kind of like Christmas Eve, the night before Hallows, a holy day. Today is a holy day as we remember saints who saints are, what they believe, and what hope they hold on to every day. And you know what? I think we should go on a little adventure, a little car ride. You wanna come with? Well, before we go, I wanna give you a hint. We're going somewhere that you would probably think, why are we going there for a children's service? Mm. It's a place where saints are celebrated and remembered. A place where people used to go fairly often to picnic, to celebrate, to remember. So, can you guess where we're going? Did you know that we were coming here? We are in a cemetery, a place where we remember. It's a place where we remember the lives that have come before us, our loved ones, sweet, sweet memories. We remember the saints that have had communion thousands of years before us. We remember the love that we felt, the sweet memories that we share with others. But most of all, we remember in this place that Jesus has promised us eternal life. And Jesus is a promise keeper that if we follow Jesus as people of God, we get to dwell with God forever. And so today, this is not a scary place, a place that we often see in movies and such. No, this is a place where we remember God and God's story. We remember the saints. And on All Saints Day today, we remember Jesus' promise. And did you know that in the New Testament, 
the word saint is used 64 times. Saints and remembering saints is important to our faith. Remembering the people that were faithful gives us hope because they trusted in God, even when it was scary, even when it was hard. And we remember today the saints that have been faithful to the Lord, who were regular people, just like you, just like me, who were faithful, even when it was scary, even when they failed, even when things around them were really hard they followed Jesus because they knew who the story was really about, God. And so today we remember saints like Mother Teresa and Joan of Arc. We remember, remember Mother Mary and Paul and Moses, all people that we know their stories in scripture, but we also remember people like our grandparents, our friends, maybe our family or our siblings and we remember God's promise and trust them to God we remember that God is faithful and that Saints are faithful to God and so as you celebrate today as you eat your Halloween candy as you light a candle to remember someone that you love as you cry as you laugh, would you take a moment and remember Jesus' promise of eternal life that there is nothing to fear, not even death, that God is with you and that in Christ we have eternal life. That is the good news today. Here with me now, the epistle for today from the first letter of John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. But we do know this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In his book, Simply Christian, the Anglican scholar and writer N.T. Wright comments on the section of the Revelation to John, which is our text today. Wright says, John has been privileged to watch something going on in heaven. This doesn't mean that he has been fast forwarded to some remote future. In fact, when he describes the ultimate future at the end of the book, it doesn't look like this earlier vision at all. Nor does it mean that he's been snatched off to some distant location far up in the sky. Rather, when he says that a door stood open in heaven, he is insisting that God's sphere and ours are not far apart and that at certain places and moments they interlock. Sometimes the boundary between them is like a thin partition in which to some people and at some times a door is opened or a curtain pulled back so that people in our dimension can see what's going on in God's dimension. What God sees in his vision, what John sees in his vision is the regular life of heaven, the worship of God, which in that dimension is going on all the time. So let us hear John again. After this I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne 
and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So here's the liturgy of heaven, the worship of heaven, past, future, and present. It breaks in on our worship explicitly today, though I wonder if we realize that every time we worship, we are rehearsing for this very scene. And not only rehearsing, we are participating in it. When we worship, a door stands open and a curtain is pulled back, and the thin boundary between heaven and earth disappears. In fact, the scholar and teacher Eugene Peterson, in his introduction to the book of Revelation, insists regarding this strange and confusing end of the Bible that uh, if we persist through the initial confusion and read on, we begin to pick up the rhythms, realize the connections, and find ourselves enlisted as participants in a multidimensional act of Christian worship. It's hard to talk about heaven and have a clear idea of precisely what we're talking about. So we do our best. We imagine Grandma and Grandpa on the porch swing together again. We imagine our bossy friend trying to take over the place. A dear parishioner whose wife had died came to me a while afterward seeking some kind of assurance that he would recognize her in heaven. In other words, uh, that we'll know one another in the same way that we know one another here on earth. A couple of years ago, I was visiting a man in the hospital who'd been told that uh, there wasn't anything more they could do for him, uh, and it was just a matter of time, as we say. I asked him how he felt about that, And he was at peace about it. In that conversation, I learned that he'd lost a couple of newborn babies uh, in his younger years. And he had always wondered about being reconnected with them in heaven. Another young man approached me once whose mother had recently died. And he said, how do I know that my mother is happy now? Was she happy with God here on earth, I asked? Oh, yes, he said, she sure was. I said, then I think she's happy with God now in heaven. And uh, what about hamsters? What about Hammy and Juliet, the hamsters? These uh, questions, you know, aren't always easy. Will, Will our pet hamster be in heaven? And will we get there immediately? Or will we have to wait? And um, just exactly what do you have to do to get there anyway? It is difficult to imagine heaven. I'm certain that none of our images can ever capture it. But today, the scripture provides us with a clue. There's something about that open door that allows us to see just how thin the veil is between earth and heaven. And today, even though we're scattered, we come to Christ's table. We come to eat bread together and to receive the cup together. And Bishop Wright says this action becomes one of the points at which heaven and earth coincide. It is one of the key moments when God's future comes rushing into the present. I'm beginning to wonder if if maybe heaven is made most plain in these moments when it bumps right up against earth through this thing called worship. After all, every one of these whom we name today once joined us to eat and to drink this holy meal. Brett Bennett and Eva Carroll, Dick Durham, Tim Loy, Evelyn MacArthur, 
Dolly McFarland, Jimmy Replogle, Maury Shepard, Betty Slack, every one of them. And do we not gather, albeit too infrequently at times, and especially in these times of distancing, with those whom we love the most at the table? Isn't the table where it happens, sharing stories of the day or days gone by, sharing hopes for future days, making new friends and reconnecting with old ones, talking over our troubles, resolving our differences? Eating and drinking is about more than just food. How many times have we gathered around the table after a funeral service to receive the comfort and the nourishment of food and drink? To tell stories, to reconnect with each other, and to lean on one another, and to somehow regain a little sense that it's going to be okay. There's a tradition among many tribal and indigenous people, and that tradition is known as the spirit plate. Whenever people gather for important feasts and community meals, there's an empty place left at that table, and uh, at that place is set the spirit plate. It is for those who are no longer gathered with the community because they've crossed over into heaven. And there's a sampling of all the foods, every food served at that meal on the spirit plate. And so those who have crossed over, who are looking in, can see. It was also tradition among the ancient Hebrews to have an Elijah plate. You may remember how the story says that the prophet Elijah did not die, but rather he was carried off in a whirlwind. And so there was a place left at the table for Elijah just in case he should return. And on the night before he met with death, Jesus gathered with his disciples in an intimate room around an ordinary table. They ate together and they drank together and they talked together as friends and family do. And when the supper was over, he took the bread and he gave thanks for it and he broke it and he passed it around. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks for it and he passed it around. And he said, whenever you do this, from now on, whenever you do it, remember me. Remember me, make room for me. And we recall how those disciples were on their way to Emmaus just a few days later talking about Jesus, talking about their friend, talking about death. And Jesus himself came and he walked among them and he talked with them and he listened to them. And when they invited him to stay and eat, and when he broke the bread with them, they recognized who he was. He wasn't dead after all, not the slightest bit. He was with them. Sometimes I'm not sure you and I yet take the common act of eating and drinking seriously enough. I, I don't mean no fun. I mean, do we know the length and the depth and the breadth and the height of it? Sometimes I'm not sure that you and I yet take this meal, this holy meal, holy communion seriously enough. And again, I don't mean no fun. I mean, do we know the length and the breadth and the depth and the height of it? There's more here at this table than meets the eye. Today we've heard the words of the first letter of John. Beloved, he says, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. We will be like him.
The one certainty out of all the questioning and the uncertainty and the wondering we have about heaven. We will be like him. But we're growing into it even now. Today, especially on All Saints Day, we're reminded that in this scripture, the word saints refers to all of the faithful of every time and every place, even us. United Methodist Bishop Will Willeman reminds us that a person is properly designated as a saint, not when that person succeeds in living a strenuously virtuous life, but whenever God commandeers that person's life, whenever that person embodies, at least to some degree, what God really wants for that person's life here and now. So we're all working at it. We're all growing into this name, saints, right here in this world. And we need the departed saints to help us. We need all of us. We need the one grand and diverse body into which we were all baptized. Including those in John's heavenly vision. Including those whose names we will name today. We need them every bit as much now as we ever did before. And so they're worshiping now. They're worshiping now. And you know you become like whatever it is you worship. You grow in the likeness of whatever the object of your worship happens to be. They will hunger no more, the voice says, and thirst no more. I, I suspect they are not hungry because they are eating, they are feasting at God's banquet table. They're not thirsty, I suspect, because the lamb at the center of the throne will guide them to the springs of the water of life. They are not hungry because this one has said to them and to us, listen, listen, I'm standing at the door knocking, and if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. And I'll tell you this. I'll tell you. They're not there of their own doing. That's clear. Their robes are washed and made clean. To use that biblical phrase, in the blood of the Lamb. That is to say, God has done the washing. God's sacrifice, God's grace, God's mercy, God's undying love poured out in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ has made it so. It is not their own doing and it is not ours. Nor have they been perfect. If we know them, we know that. We've already said they weren't perfect. Their robes like ours, have been dirty. If they'd never been dirty, they'd never needed to be washed. They're washed clean by the mercy of God. Oh, let's eat with them today, shall we? Let's feast on God's grace, on God's mercy with them. Who are they for you? Do you know some of their names? Can you say them? As you come today, name their names. And as you come, make room for them at the table. They're making room for us. Amen. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, 
Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. Let us give thanks for these brothers and sisters in Christ, to whom God has granted rest from their labors. Brett Bennett Eva Carroll Dick Durham Tim Loy Evelyn MacArthur Dolly McFarland Jimmy Repvogel Maury Shepherd Betty Slack Other friends and loved ones who have died this year Almighty God, we give you thanks for these your servants whom we remember today. Grant us grace to follow them as they followed Christ. Bring us with them to those things no eye has seen, nor ear heard, which you have prepared for those who love you. Give us faith to look beyond touch and sight, and seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Enable us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Bring us at last to your eternal peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please join me in the prayer of dedication? O Lord our God, the offer and giver of all good things. We thank you for all your mercies and for your loving care over all your creatures. We bless you for the gift of life, for your protection round about us, for your guiding hand upon us, and for the tokens of your love within us. We thank you for friendship and duty, for good hopes and precious memories, for the joys that cheer us, and the trials that teach us to trust in you. Most of all, we thank you for the saving knowledge of your Son, our Savior, for the living presence of your Spirit, the Comforter, for your Church, the Body of Christ, for the ministry of Word and Sacrament, and all the means of grace. And all these things, O Heavenly God, make us wise for a right use of your benefits, that we may render an acceptable thanksgiving unto you, all the days of our lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Christ our Lord has gone before us in death as have our beloved ones whom we have named today showing us the way into eternal life God has given to us graciously by giving us these saints God has received that which was on loan to us and we are grateful for the many days we shared now may the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore, world without end. Amen. Amen.